What a night, what a night, what a night. Woo! Look at Jesus. I'm going to sit down. You just do whatever God tells you well, to do. Well, all right. Thank you, sir. You know, I feel like I'm at home here tonight. Amen. This is what church ought to feel like. Amen. Where you know you're in the presence of the Lord. The message tonight is called the hearing ear. And I pray that you literally can digest this to the degree that it affects the way you live. Amen. My little wife saw me sitting in the chair in the corner of our beautiful little hotel room here that Pastor and his lovely wife have provided for us. And she saw me over there just praying in tongues. And she came and grabbed my hands and started praying in the Spirit. And after she was done, I have learned that after we pray in the Spirit, we ought to interpret back to our minds. And I said, Lord, what were we just praying? And he said, Isaiah 46. And I turned over there, and he said to me these words, and I'm just going to read it, because this is how simple this is, but how profound it is. For in Isaiah chapter 46, he opened the Scripture to me. How many believe Jesus needs to open the Word to us? Amen. And here's what it said. He said, listen to me, O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld, who have been upheld by me from birth. Now let me just say, the Lord's holding all those that are in the birth canal. Amen. Held and upheld by me from birth who have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I am he. Even to your gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry you and will deliver you. I got a good word from the Lord. Amen. The Lord said, I'm carrying you. Amen. Can you claim that tonight for yourself? The Bible says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, there's no way we can look unto Jesus other than to know he's at the right hand of the Father praying for us, as the Scripture declares, but to look at the Gospels, amen. At another place in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, it said, it said, consider him, Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our faith. And so I began to consider Jesus. I began to think about Jesus. We need to look about how he lived his life because in John chapter 20 and verse 21, listen carefully. He said, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. As the Father sent me, even so send I you. Jesus never worked a miracle or to our knowledge, he never preached a message or did any signs, wonders, or supernatural works until after the Spirit of the Lord came upon him when he was baptized in the river Jordan by John, his cousin, and he heard the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son whom I'm well pleased. And then the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. You would have thought it, you would have thought it led him right into the, straight into the ministry, but he had to go through a trial first. Amen. And sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through trials to make us stronger. Amen. He was building his spiritual muscle. Amen. As he spoke the word of God, as it was coming to him. There were seven churches mentioned in the book of Revelation in chapter 2 and 3. But they all ended, the instruction to those churches all ended the same way. He that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Did you hear that? It's not what the Spirit said to the church. It's what the Spirit is saying to the church. In other words, there is a fresh, present word for you, and particularly for you, that know you're on the precipice 
of taking another step with Jesus. How many believe you're stepping into your future? Amen. And that promotion is on the way, even as that word came from Pastor Richard just a moment ago. And so as I was considering Jesus, as I was looking unto Jesus, the Lord dealt with me about the words he said about himself over in the book of John chapter 5. It's an amazing passage when he says in John chapter 5, and I love this, because in John chapter 5 in verse 19, he says it two times in the fifth chapter of the gospel of John. He says it two times, but he says it in two different ways. Verse 19 of John's gospel, chapter 5, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. The Son can do nothing of himself. This is Jesus talking. But he said, But what he sees the Father do, and whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Then in verse 30, he said, I can of myself do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I go to my Father, and I don't seek my own glory and my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the Lord Jesus Christ saying, I can do nothing except what I see and what I hear. Now, if Jesus is in that situation, living fully God still, yet had literally come down from his place of glory to live also as fully man, if he had to live by what he was hearing the Father say and what he was seeing the Father doing, where does that put you? And where does that put me tonight? How many believe it's important that we learn how to hear the voice of the Spirit? This word came so strongly to me today again. I wrote a book about this years ago. As a matter of fact, it was the second series of sermons after I wrote the book, Could You Not Tarry One Hour? And I began to consider Jesus and his life all the way to the cross. All the way to the cross, he had to pray through in the Garden of Gethsemane to make sure it was the right time. He knew he came to give his life a ransom for all of us. But yet praying all the way through to the place of grace where he knew in his knower, he knew down in the very depths of his being that this was the right time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to learn how to hear the voice of the Spirit. My favorite verse in the Gospel of John is John chapter 16 and verse 13 where it says, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will not speak of himself. But whatever he hears the Father say, that shall he speak to you and he's going to show you things to come. The Spirit himself is making intercession through us to the Lord Jesus Jesus brings that before the Father. Then the Father speaks it back to the Spirit, and the Spirit of God lives in you. And can I just say, if you've got time to listen, He's got time to talk. (laughs) Even like today. Uh Uh-oh. I did that. Even like today, Leah and I sitting there saying, Lord, what's our next step? We've been living for 25 years as husband and wife, walking to our next step. And every time we finish one assignment, we go to another. I'm glad I finally made it here. Amen. Because I not only made some great friends, I'm in a great church tonight. Your pastor, amen, is a man of God. And I've learned in my heart of hearts to discern folks. And it didn't take me long when I heard him say, when the Lord said so, don't say no. But then the reciprocation from God as he heard that word was a literal explosion of people chasing him down. How many of you like for people to be chasing you down with blessings so that you could bless the world just like Abraham did? The Lord spoke to Abraham and said, Abram, he said, 
I have blessed you so I can make you a blessing. And even so, I saw that in your pastor. I was reminded of the time when I was serving as the dean of the Graduate School of Theology and Overall Spiritual and Theological Affairs at Oral Roberts University. For a number of years, one day I get a telephone call, and it's Oral Roberts himself on the phone, and Brother Roberts said, Come and get in my little Buick and go with me and let's, let's drive around the campus. I want to show you something. And he ride up, drive up to one building and he said, you want to know how I got that big building there? I said, how did you do it, Brother Roberts? He said, well, I prayed a specific prayer in the Spirit and I said, Lord, what should I sow in order that I can reap, amen, that building that I'm seeing in the Spirit? Then he went to another building and said, you want to know how I got that building? Well, by the time we'd been going an hour and a half, he said, Larry, are you catching on to this yet? I said, Brother Roberts, I've had this for years. He said, I know you have, but I didn't want you to ever forget it or ever forget that old Roberts taught it to you. Well, tonight I'm bringing it to you. Amen. When the Lord says, sow, sow what he says to sow. If he tells you to sow $1,000, don't give 2000 now, you heard what I said, and I meant it. Amen. But he told the pastor, when I say so, don't say no. I'll never forget that. And as a result, God has overrun him with blessings, not only for this community, but also for the nations of the world that he's serving. And I'm so honored and thankful to have gotten to know him the way I have in these few days. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about hearing aids, some aids to hearing. This morning I talked about praying through the prayer that teaches us how to pray. Do you know what happens when you pray through that prayer? You're literally opening up spiritual arteries on the inside of your spirit man to experience the fatherhood of God and His voice speaking in you. To experience the very presence of Jesus as you worship Him for what the blood has bought for you. To experience the kingdom now, amen. And the will of God now, even as it is in heaven. To experience the supernatural prosperity and provision of daily bread. Daily forgiveness, amen. Daily deliverance from evil. You're breaking the blocks down. You're clearing out the arteries of your inner man so that after you've prayed that through, you've got an open line then just to continue to pray in the Spirit. Are you getting this? Because the blood, amen, as the pastor will tell you, the blood tells everything. The life is in the blood. And so the, the blood bought every part of that prayer. And so as we pray, amen, and as we pray through in the Spirit, we find those channels or those, those arteries of our inner man opening up so that as we go through our days, as we go through day by day, we've got an open line, amen, to be able to pray in the Spirit all day long and be listening back to what the Spirit would say to us. Just as tonight, I received the assurance and the promise, he said, I will not only carry you, but I'm going to deliver you from whatever may come against you. Amen. I needed that. Amen. How many of you know that preachers need the word of the Lord to come to them too? And this preacher enjoyed that and had a good time with that. If you don't have somebody to pray with you like that, find somebody. And if you can't find anybody, just say, Larry Lee's going to be praying with me. Because I make a commitment tonight to become your prayer, one of your prayer pastors. Amen. Amen. Carried along by the Spirit. At every remembrance of you, I will be interceding and believing that the Lord Himself is going to speak to those of you in this great congregation. First of all, I challenge you to open up the inner arteries of your heart by praying the way Jesus taught us to pray because he enumerated every need of the human condition in that prayer that teaches us how to pray. And I'll not preach through that again the, tonight, but how many of you heard it? 
and you understand what I'm saying, wave at me. So I know I did a good job this morning. Amen. The second thing that is eminently important is that you settle in your heart to obey. You settle in your heart that whatever you're hearing from God, that you will step out on that word. When Jesus was in the mountain after he fed the 5,000, he heard the Father say, it doesn't say this in the Bible, but it must have been the Father because no man had ever walked on water before. He was led by the Spirit. He could of his own self do nothing. But he saw himself walking on that water to the, tr- to the disciples out on the troubled waters. And as he walked out on the water, there was only one voice that came from the boat where the 12 apostles were uh, there trying to save their own lives from the storm. One voice, and you know who it was. Isn't it amazing that it was Simon Peter? Isn't that amazing? Because he's the one whose theology was so messed up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He said, let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And it, it was so messed up that God knocked him on the ground and said, this is my beloved son. He's not a prophet or a lawgiver. Simon Peter denied the Lord three times, but he got it right. When Jesus said, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He had a lot of problems in his own life. How many of you have got a few, a little bit, a few rough edges that still need to be fixed just a little bit? But Peter was the only one with the, if you will, the spiritual gut, if you will, of the spiritual intestinal fortitude to say, Lord, if it be thou, bids me come unto thee on the water. Lord, if that's really you, Jesus said, fear not, it is I, it's me. Don't be afraid. Why? Because I'm the one walking on the water to you. That's what he's saying to somebody in this room right now. Don't be afraid. The water's rough, but I'm coming to you. And I pray you'll be the one, no matter what you're going through, that will answer back as Peter did. He said, Lord, if it be thou bidst me come unto thee on the water, and Jesus did not give him a manual of, about water walking. He didn't teach a, a, he, he a seven-point sermon on how to walk out of, on that water. He just said one word to him. How many of you know one word will change everything? He just said this word. He said, come. And before Peter knew what he was doing, he had stepped out and he was not walking on water. He was walking on a living word. And until he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to sink, he was doing great. But as soon as he said, Lord, save me. How many of you would rather be out on the water with Jesus than sitting in the boat with the guys scared to death? Amen. As soon as he said, Lord, save me, Jesus reached down his strong hand and lifted that man up into the boat. That must must have been a mighty right arm, amen. Lifted him up into the boat, and he rebuked them all for their unbelief on several occasions. But at the same time, isn't it amazing that this same Simon Peter was the one that was chosen to preach the gospel first to the Jews on the day of Pentecost? where they received the Holy Spirit, and then to the Gentiles at Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10. Even so, it was the one that was willing to hear, but it settled in his heart when the Lord spoke to him. When the Lord says it to you, I'm going to obey what I hear. Let me say it a different way. Why would the Lord tell you to do something or tell you, that something was coming if he knew already you weren't going to do it. That was not, I didn't get any amens on that. And so the, our heart has to be settled that the Lord is going to speak to our hearts. When we pray in the Spirit and we open up those inner, if you will, arteries of our heart day by day, we must expect the Lord through the day. To say, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is your next step. And sometimes I will guarantee you, you'll figure out his ways are not your ways. 
<laughs> his thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth, even so high has our Lord uh, ascended above our natural minds. But I pray that we can come out of our own natural thinking and move into the realm of the Spirit because that's the realm of the supernatural where your potential can be realized. Every one of you are bound with powerful potential, so much so that you cannot imagine. When the Lord saved me when I was a 17-year-old boy, I had a death sentence on my life in a hospital. I'll not go into detail other than to say I fell on the floor and began to cry out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That was my whole prayer. Then I heard for the first time, you will be a minister to young people. Three years later, I graduated with a bachelor's degree at age 21 from Dallas Baptist University and became a, the pastor called me and said, God spoke to me and said, you're going to be our minister to youth. You're going to be our minister to young people. Our youth group grew almost overnight from 50 to 14. Because I said, we're here to study the Word. We're here to experience the power of the Spirit. I'd just been filled with the Spirit about a year, and I wanted everybody, amen, to experience what I had Man, we were laying hands on bullfrogs and doorknobs and everything we could find. And we would hear people sneaking up to our door. My roommate's name was Jerry. They called him Weird Jerry because he was the only real hippie in Kilgore, Texas. And Jerry got saved at midnight one night when he said, Okay, Larry, tell me about Jesus. Is this real? And at 4 o'clock in the morning, I stopped preaching. Now, somebody out there just checked their watch and said, Oh, Lord, what have we got into tonight? <laughs> I said, That's it, man. Go. All the Bible I knew was Matthew 5, 6, and 7. I said, Go read that through. Get on the floor and start shouting, Jesus. And when it hits you, you know you got it. I got home about 5 in the morning, and at 5.30, my telephone rang. And I picked it up, and it's Jerry, it was Jerry, and Jerry said, Larry, I got it, man. And my drummer, Max, is in the backyard feeding his rabbits. These were different kind of people back in the 60s, okay? He's back in the backyard feeding his rabbits, and I think he's got it too because I went and preached to him, and he did the same thing. And so the potential that's hidden behind all of the facades that we put on in life is hidden by God in the very heart and the very innermost being of God Himself about you. But you'll never experience it just by trying harder. You'll only experience it by hearing what the Spirit is saying to you and stepping out of that boat and becoming who God called you to be. Amen. When I was told by the Lord, I, I was up in Canada preaching and I'd been invited to that little Bible study in Rockwall, Texas. Rockwall, Texas had one blinking light. It had one Sonic and had one Dairy Queen and one school. It was a little bitty town that if you blinked going through it, it was in the smallest county in the entire state of Texas. And ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of counties in Texas. That church that grew to 11,000 members in 11 years learned that as they sowed to the Lord, miracles could happen in their lives. It is now, though the smallest county, it is the wealthiest county per capita household of any county in the entire state of Texas. All politicians get to Rockwall now. And they wanted to get in that pulpit, but I never let anybody up there. <laughs> I loved them all, but I wasn't, for, I wasn't into politics. I was into Jesus. And as you can tell, I had a bad case of the can't help it. I couldn't help but preach this gospel. And I preached it and preached it and preached it until the people believed it and they began to hear Jesus for themselves. I think about my friend Dr. Paul 
who came into our service just like one of these services tonight. But he was rolled in in a wheelchair because he'd finished medical school and when he'd gotten through his medical school, he had gone skiing in Colorado and he hit a tree going down a mountain, broke his back in two places. Just out of medical school. And he and his little wife had saved up enough money just to start their, to start their practice. And lo and behold, they had enough. And one morning at about four in the morning, there came a knock on my door. And I don't know how you feel about people beating on your door at four in the morning. But I didn't feel real comfortable about it. I didn't have a firearm, but I had a five iron. <laughs> and I could knock the head off a water moxkin with a five iron. Amen. So I went and opened the door, and there stood Dr. Paul. I said, Paul, what are you doing? He said, well, you remember when I came to church, and I was healed by the power of God. By the way, when I got up that morning before the congregation with him in the back, I'd never seen him before, didn't know anything about him. I said, God is healing somebody's broken back right now. And his back popped in two places. He went and got x-rayed that afternoon, and his back was completely healed. Somebody help me shout. Somebody go ahead and say hallelujah. He said, we saved up $50,000, and we understand that's exactly what the church needs in order to get this building finished. I said, that's the number. He said, here's the check. I'll start my medical practice in my home. But God spoke to me and said, so this. Can I tell you now, it's been 43 years later, and this same doctor and his family own eight mobile home parks, his medical practice has exploded through the years, and he's become a multi-gozillionaire in the words of Forrest Gump. Amen. How many of you understand what I'm saying? What would have happened if he said, no, i got to hold on to that because that's all we got? And he sold it. Why? Because he heard the Lord say, I need that. I want you to sow that tonight. God is working on those that will go ahead and settle in their heart. He won't speak to you till you settle it in your heart. Wouldn't be a bad place to stop right here and say, Lord, if you speak to me, I will obey you. Wouldn't be a bad place just to lift a hand to God all over this room and say, Lord, if you speak to my heart, I settle it today. I will do what you tell me to do. And I'll do it in the time and in the way you tell me. But give me the wisdom to know it's you. And I will step out on your word. And I will walk on the word. And I'll forget about the water that's around my feet. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name to look into our hearts and bless these, O oh Lord, with blessings that, is, that are beyond speaking. Amen. And amen and amen and say, I, now tell the Lord, I really meant that, Lord. Go ahead and tell him. The Lord's doing such a work right now. He will lead you if you will follow. You know who said that? Catherine Kuhlman said that. Many of you don't know who she was, but she was one of the great, great, great healing evangelists of the last century. Great words. She said, "If he will lead you, if you will follow. Lift a hand and wave it to the Lord and say, I will follow you, Lord. And so it's not only settling in your heart you will ob that you will obey him, but it's also, and here is the biggest, I'm going to give you the best hearing aid in the world right now. You've got to believe and expect the Holy Spirit to speak in your heart. Can I say it again? You've got to believe that when he said, when the spirit of truth has come, he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, he will also speak, and he will show you the things to come. Jesus Christ said that. Jesus is saying that to you tonight. I'm going to show you the things to come by the spirit that lives on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit. You've got to say, Lord, I believe that you're going to speak, and I expect you to speak to me. When I speak to you, I'm going to take time. 
And I'm going to listen to what you've got to say. When we take our walks, my wife and I, we always say, let's now listen to Jesus. We have one son, my wife and I do. His name is Noah Joseph. He had a little trouble with his L's saying Larry Lee. He said, wowie wee. He said, he told one lady one day, he said, this is my daddy, Dr. Wowie Wee. And this is my mama, we a we. <laughs> but every time after we would pray together, Noah would say, when he was only three years old, let's listen to Jesus. Let's listen to Jesus. How many believe if you pray in the Spirit, the Bible said, let those who pray in an unknown tongue that are speaking mysteries in the Spirit, you know not what you pray for. But you can then, the Bible says, let them interpret back what they are praying. In other words, when you pray out in the spirit realm, you can take time then to listen and you can interpret back what you've been praying if the Lord's ready to speak at that moment. If you don't hear in that moment, get ready to hear. Amen. Because God wants to lead you more than you want to be led. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. He cares about you in a way that's deeper than deep. He longs to fulfill the desires of your heart. But they do not come by might nor by power. They don't come by education. If it would have come by education, then I, it would have come that way through me. But I was, the, if you will, I was the... The, the one that was the outcast. We were thrown out of the Dallas Baptist Association. Yeah, because signs, wonders, and miracles. The gifts of the Spirit were moving, and they threw us out. I was on a TV set with Pat Robertson in Dallas, Texas, and when they told me, Pat leaned over and said to me, he also was a Spirit-filled Southern Baptist, and he just went to heaven. Pat leaned over and he said, you guys just got thrown out of the Dallas Baptist Association. I jumped up out of my chair and began to praise God out loud. He said, have you lost your mind, man? I said, no. Doesn't it say that when they cast you out, praise God because he'll come looking for you when they cast you out. Somebody say hallelujah. So go ahead and praise him with me tonight because you can expect to hear from the Spirit of grace and he will do things that are exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. I quoted the verse this morning, but I'm going to do it again tonight. Call unto me. And what did he say? Call unto me and I will what? I will answer you. But not just that, I will show you great and mighty things that you have never seen before. We've all had enough of what we've already seen. And some of you that feel like you're a little bit older, can I tell you, I'm a little older too. But I'm expecting a mighty revival in these last days. While the world has gone mad is, is the middle of the beginnings of sorrows. There's also going to be the beginnings of rejo rejoicings. Amen. Because the Lord is going to draw them from the north and the south and the east and the west. And there's going to be a revival even in the nation of Israel. Amen. And there's going to be appearances of the supernatural angelic host all throughout that region. And you'll begin to hear about it over the next few weeks and months. The supernatural power of God is going to be released. And the anointing of the Lord himself will perform it in your day. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem tonight. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem tonight. We claim the promise, O oh Lord, that you said they will prosper who love her. And we love her tonight. And we stand in faith for her tonight. And at the same time, we are expecting revival tonight. My friend Steve Hage will be here tomorrow night. He is singularly one of the greatest preachers in the world. I'm not exaggerating when I say that because at one point he was a youth pastor under my uh, spiritual covering in the church I was pastoring. 
And my, how God's used him throughout the earth. How God is using him today. There won't be anything on television tomorrow night. Nothing that you can turn on, not even as the world burns. Amen. Come on now. Get up and come to church tomorrow night. I don't know what time it starts, but it's good to be here by what? Seven o'clock. Amen. I want to encourage everybody to say, hey, it's more important for me right now to be in church. Get in that presence where there's that worship. And the devil will do everything he can to keep you out of the assembly of the saints. But that's because in corporate worship, you get something that you cannot get anywhere else. And the Lord will be whispering to you all through church. And tonight I am praying for you that you will set your heart on obedience, opening up those inner channels of your heart. And you'll begin to listen, expecting to hear because you have decided to obey. Those are the greatest hearing aids that I can give you tonight. And I am so thankful tonight that what he has started in you he is faithful to finish. Amen. Somebody say God is a finisher. God is a finisher. What he has started in you, he is well able to finish. Amen. And you say, well, I've messed up here. I've messed up there. Don't you think God knew about that before you did it? And he didn't cause you to get in the flesh. But he will forgive you, cleanse you. He will heal you and make you stronger for your future. Amen. If you will serve him and give your life to his name right here in his house. The Lord dealt with me this afternoon as I was preparing. And as I close tonight, I want to close with this. That I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you that when you were born again, you got everything in the spiritual realm that you have in your natural realm. In other words, you got a new heart spiritually. You got new feet. You can walk in the Spirit. You got fingers that feel after the will of God by faith. Are y'all hearing this? You got eyes that see with the understanding of the Spirit. You got lungs now that breathe the air of the Spirit of grace and love even toward those that have trespassed against you. In other words, everything you got in the natural man when you were born into this world, you received the very same things in the spiritual realm, but they're all activated by hearing and by declaring what the Lord is saying and then by obeying what he tells you to do. How many of you heard what I just said? Everything you've got on the inside of you is activated by hearing. And so I challenge you tonight that if you pray in the Spirit, pray more than you ever have before. Pray with a greater sense of confidence that you can interpret back to your mind, and there will be an anointing released through you as you obey God. Because he's going to do great and mighty things that you've never seen before. And as he does it, he will receive all the glory. All that matters tonight is not that Larry Lee came and preached from his book, The Hearing Ear. But that you heard something in the spirit realm that said, God is going to speak to me. Can you believe it tonight? Would you wave a hand to the Lord just with your hand and say, I believe God wants to speak to me. I believe God wants to speak in my spirit, man. Father, I ask you now for us as we have come into this place of worship, as we have gathered in this place tonight, and as you have drawn us into this incredible atmosphere of the supernatural, we have moved into a realm in this day that I pray will be accelerated and will be complemented by signs and wonders and miracles to testify that Jesus is real and that Jesus is alive. I thank you, O oh Lord, that you're laying your hands on our lives 
For as we hear, Jesus said, I can't do anything except what I hear the Father say. When the Spirit has come, He will speak what He hears and show you things to come. Put your hands on your ears right now. I'm going to pray over your hearing ears. I want you to say out loud, I will hear the voice of the Spirit. I will obey His voice. And I will see His hand move through my life. Lord, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing in this room right now. Opening spiritual ears that they can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit as the Son of God is interceding for us in heaven. He is interceding for us on the inside and He is literally speaking that into our consciousness And we have then the mind of Christ. And we walk in the Spirit. And we see the supernatural power of the living God. Father, I pray over this great church. Heavenly Father, I know that Pastor Richard and Joan have laid their lives down in this house. They've given the best years of their lives. And those closing our Let her in. Let it be greater than that of our former. Amen. Let them see the desires of their heart, every one of them fulfilled. And let all of these, the congregants and all of those that have joined to them, let them see, hallelujah, what you have pre-prepared for them and that you're literally holding in your heart to be revealed to them. I pray it now over their hearing ears. I will hear and I will obey. In Jesus' holy name. I do not know how you receive members into your church. But can I say to you that years ago the Lord showed me that the Bible says the Lord added to the church Daily, those that were being saved. It didn't say the Lord added to the Lord, those being saved. It said He added to the assembly. And when I read that, I said, Lord, do you mean there's people out there that are unsaved that are being added? Oh, yes. Oh, Lord, are you talking about people that have been saved for 30 years? Oh, yes. I'm talking about people that I have joined to you by the Holy Spirit. Not everyone, but every. But not every other one either, Lord. I want the north, the south, and the east, and the west to give up those that belong to this house in Jesus' name. How many of you here in this room would say to me, Dr. Larry Lee, I may have been attending here for a long time, but I've never stood publicly and declared this is my church where I belong under the authority of this great man of God. But I want... Everybody to know that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nor am I ashamed of this house that I belong to. How many of you are not yet considered members of the church, but you believe that the Lord is adding you here under this anointing in this place? Would you raise your hand right now so I can see where you are? I'm going to just count because I know how many there are already. I asked Mar Cirillo one year, I said, how, do you, how did you bring... How did you do the miracles? He said, I brought them into the building with me. (laughs) And tonight I knew that you would be here. Now, can I ask all of you with hands raised to come and meet me right down here in this altar? Come right now and just meet me right down here. Because I'm going to pray a prayer that God is going to answer over your life. If you lifted your hand, just come and stand right here with me. Amen. Come and just gather close. Gather close. Come close. Amen. Come close. I did not model this this morning, but I could have. But the Lord said, not yet. I wanted to do it tonight because the Lord is adding to the church those that are being saved. Let's all pray out loud what we have called traditionally the sinner's prayer. 
and just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Say it, everybody. Everybody in the house. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died for my sins. You rose from the dead, that you are alive today. I confess with my mouth, believing in my heart, you did it for me. And I receive you, Jesus, as the Lord and the leader of my life from this night forward. Thank you for adding me to this house in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. I feel impressed to pray a prayer over you that stand here. Reach your hand out toward the altar because this is a beautiful, holy moment. Father, you instructed me simply to pray that nothing but the will of God be done in their lives from this point on. That whatever would try to divert them from your purpose and your power, from what you have for them in their future, I pray now in Jesus' name that you would protect them by your angels and you would keep them as the apple of your eye and you will settle them here in the house of God and that you would do through them what only you can do in Jesus' holy name. And you that here in front of me, do you all believe God's going to do that in your life? I will guarantee you He's going to. Amen. And I am so thankful for you. I'm proud of you in Jesus' name. You had courage to get up and come down here. And this is the beginning of a whole new day in your life. Pastor, I don't know what you want me to do with these people except bless them and tell them to go be seated. But just know this. We're going to have church again here tomorrow night, and you're welcome. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seat. Let's give God all the glory. Somebody help me shout. We only added 100 people a week for four years in a row, just like that, what you saw just then. And we would take them quickly to another room. We would pray over them. We'd get whatever information they were comfortable giving us about themselves, and we would begin to connect them to people all throughout the body. I just want to say tonight, I'm so thankful. I told Pastor Richard today, I'm so glad I got a new friend. Amen. Come on up, Pastor. Amen. And do what you're led to do. Amen. Let's give God the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I just want to say that um, what Dr. Lee was sharing tonight is really what opened the door to the supernatural for me. When I took my first trip to China, it was because I acted on what I felt was a word from the Lord. And as crazy as it seemed, and I'll tell you, it was so crazy that when I shared with some people, they said, you're going to go to China on a dream? Like, they thought it was crazy. Thank you, Dr. Lee. What a great, great word. And so as crazy as it sounded, I I had supernatural confirmations along the way. And at one point, I remember telling Joan, "I, I, I feel like God is yelling at me, go to China because I had so many supernatural confirmations. And I'll tell you, in all the years that I've traveled overseas, no one has has walked up to me and said, I want to buy your ticket to where you're going. But I had a gentleman, the first elder in our church, call me out of the blue during that season and said, Pastor Rich, talk to me about missions. And so I'm talking to him about missions, and, and then finally he says, but what about China? And I said, well, we're not in China, but I had a dream, and in this dream, God told me to go to, and I told him the name of this crazy city, Shishangbana, China, 
And he said, man, I feel God on that. The next day, he sent a check to pay for my ticket to China. And I knew at that moment, okay, as crazy as it seems, I didn't know why I was going to China, but I just knew at that moment God was speaking to me. And this story is so wild to, to go on a whim, so to speak, just to go on a dream, a word, that the pieces kept coming as I stepped out in obedience. It wasn't until I got on the plane that the second word came to me. I'm going to meet somebody who has a spiritual influence over the whole region. I had no idea what who that was. But then as I take each step, we get to we get to, we we check into our hotel. I'm sitting in my room maybe an hour and a half and Holy Spirit says go into the lobby right now. As crazy as that sounds, I'm like, okay, well, I'm. what if I'm wrong? Okay, I'll take my computer with me. I'll sit in the lobby and, okay. And so I go down into the, to the lobby, and it's like this woman is standing there with an attache case in her hand. She's watching the elevators. She's over where the chairs are, and she, as soon as I walked out, she goes, and I walk up to her, and in perfect English, she starts talking to me about the head Buddhist monk. I was sharing this with, with uh, Dr. Lee and his wife, Leah, yesterday. And I said, and just as quick as that conversation started, I mean, she, her opening comment was, did you know that the head Buddhist monk is being coronated I mean, those were her opening lines, not, hello, how are you, I'm so and so, none of that. It was, boom, right into this. And she says, and, and I'm having this deja vu experience all of a sudden, and I realize this is who I'm here for, the head Buddhist monk. And, and so after she's done telling me about this monk and these tribes, she walks out the door and I literally ran to the door because I wanted to talk to her some more, and there was nobody outside. I, I ran around the huge fountain. It was a big circular driveway. I ran, literally ran out to where the entrance was, looked on the sidewalk left and right, searched the parking lot. There was nobody there. She had just disappeared. And I'm walking back into the lobby and I hear the scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Be careful when you entertain strangers. For some have entertained angels unaware. And I literally said out loud, oh my God, that was an angel. And I knew that I knew that I knew this was the reason for the, the trip. This was the reason for all of it. And as crazy as that miracle sounds, because it was a miracle. When we found this monk the next morning, I, we were told first off by his secretary we could not meet with him. It was illegal, and I just screamed, you tell him, and I'm speaking to my interpreter, I said, you tell him I flew all the way from the United States, United States of America to say happy birthday to the monk last night. It was his birthday. He turned 50 years of age. And his secretary said, there's nothing I, I can do. Just wait. I can't promise you anything. And about 20 minutes later, in walks the head Buddhist monk over all of southern China. And I found out later by, by coincidentally at 1 in the morning, the Discovery Channel was on while I'm laying in the hospital. I had, I had surgery um, when I got back, and I'm laying in the hospital, I wake up from my surgical uh, operation where they had to remove part of my kidney. And the TV was on, and there is the, this monk, his name, Kuba. There is this monk who I just ministered to, and he's on National Geographic. And I'm like, okay, God, this is not coincidence. And so... When I share with him that, I, I, that I, fl I flew all the way to the United States just to meet him, 
he invited me to his, his office. And as we were going upstairs, the missionary who thought I was cuckoo turned around and gave me the thumbs up, and he was excited because he was on his first supernatural journey. And it was a supernatural journey. And as, as the Holy Spirit came over me and I prophesied over him and shocked him, and he opened his heart and prayed with us before we left. Within 40 minutes, here I was praying with the head Buddhist monk over all of China. Southern China and Thailand, I found out. And that was just the beginning of a miracle. There was a part two that took place three months later. That, that because in the prophecy that I gave him, the word that the Lord said was when you almost died at 17, you said, God, if you're real, I want to know you. And the Lord sent me years later to tell you he heard your prayer. He, he's real. And that he wants you to tell every young monk that walks into this monastery that you met Jesus. And you know what? He did. And every year when the new monks come, and they still do this, I'm told that they're in that city. They, the uh, underground pastor that we were with gets invited to preach about Jesus to all the new monk recruits. Amen. And here was an underground revival occurring because I heard and I just said, okay, God, I'll do it. And as crazy as that sounds, each step of the way, there was a miracle that kept unfolding as I just took each step. The point Dr. Lee was saying is that if you will just commit to saying, God, okay, I'll do whatever you tell me to do when you say it. It'll be the beginning of supernatural miracles. And it doesn't matter what it is. It, it doesn't matter if, if it's ministry to somebody at the restaurant. It doesn't matter if it's you sowing a seed because God told you to sow a seed. Because he works in all these areas. It's all about obedience. Uh, like Dr. Lee said, if he tells you do one thing, don't do something else. Just do whatever it is he tells you to do. And if you're not sure what God is telling you to do, I just tell people, does this mean anything to you? Does this mean anything to you? And watch what God will do. Because he'll use anyone who is willing. And I never forget when I heard Dr. Lee say many years ago, Lord, give me a hearing ear. Because prior to that, I used to say, God doesn't speak to me. I grew up in church my whole life, and I'd hear pastors talking about God speaking to them. And I would say, God, how come you don't speak to me? Until one day I was reading the Bible, and Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And as I looked at that, I said, I'm never going to say again that you don't speak to me. Because your word says you do. Your word says you, that your sheep hear your voice. I'm going to start saying, thank you, Father, that I'm your sheep, and I hear your voice. Dr. Lee, I said this in Kuwait, in the Middle East, to a group of Anglican pastors, and they rose up. They wanted to kill me. They had to literally escort me out immediately because I had the audacity to say that God still speaks to his people. God wants to lead us and guide us. And so I just, I thank you, Dr. Lee, because that teaching the hearing ear opened my heart to receiving the voice of God. So I want us to close, and uh, I want us to bless Dr. Lee, and, and I'm just going to pray that God will speak to you. Whatever he, he tells you to give, just do whatever he, he tells you to do, because it's different for all of us. Amen. And, and so um, this afternoon, you know, my wife said, this is what we gave to Lee, and I, Dr. Lee, I said, well, I want to double that. And, you know, you just do what God tells you to do. That's, that's all I'm asking you to do. But when you walk out of here today, say, say, Father, I thank you that I hear your voice. And I'm going to step out on every, every time I, I believe you're speaking to me. And, and it's okay. You know what? Sometimes you'll make mistakes. You'll say, does this mean anything to you? And the person will say, nope. Okay, fine. Okay, God, I don't know how I missed that, but at least I stepped out. You, you step out and watch God begin to move. And what you'll discover as you get used to hearing his voice, 
you'll start discerning and recognizing his voice on a regular basis. And you'll know that you know and you're nowhere when he's speaking to you. Amen? Just like you know when, without looking at caller ID, you, you, you know mama's voice when she says, Ricky? <laughs> you know your mother's voice when she calls your name. You know your friend's voice. They can block their caller ID, and as soon as you hear their voice, you know who it is. That's what will happen to you. So, Father, I thank you for giving us a hearing ear tonight to hear your voice. Let this be the release of the supernatural in this church. I thank you there will be supernatural stories that are going to come in as we just, <laughs> as we just step out to waitresses, to people at work, and, and people that you bring us into relationship with that we come across, that we just began to speak what you said. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that supernatural power of God is going to be released in your people and through your people in Jesus' name. Amen. The way we give around here is we encourage you to, to either grab the, the envelope in the chair pocket in front of you and you can give that way. You can mark the envelope. If you're giving a check, you can write a check. We still take checks. Hallelujah. Young people are like, what's a check? Well, that's, that's something that's not too old, but it, it, it was back in the day. Uh, <laughs> but if you can give that way. You can give digitally. If you're watching online, you can give that way. I encourage you to, to give. This is all going to go to Dr. Lee, and we, we just want to bless him. I want to say thank you, sir, for blessing us today. Uh, your ministry changed my life early, in my early years, and it's truly a pleasure to honor a spiritual father in the faith, and, and I honor you, sir. And it's been a pleasure getting to know you. Amen. Praise God. Well, Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, Father, for the word that we received this morning and tonight, Lord. And, and God, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing something awesome and something new in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're going to give, by the way, with a check or through your envelope, uh, you can deposit that in the offering containers. Just make sure you write L-E-A across either the check there on the note section or across the envelope, and uh, that'll help our ladies know um, exactly what your intent was if you're giving by the app. Of course, there's a check, uh, a block drop-down menu there for guest speaker, and you can give that way. They'll know by the date that um, this was for Dr. Lee as well. So amen. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you all, Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, wasn't worship tonight off the chain? I don't know about you, but I was like, whoa, Jesus is about to ride up on in, inside of here any moment on that white stallion, hallelujah. <laughs> and one of these days, I'm just, that's been my prayer. I said, Jesus, I, I want one day, I want you to come riding down on your white stallion in service and let us see you. I mean, that's what I want, that's what I want Jesus to do. And, and so... Uh, praise God, powerful, but tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Steve Hage, I told you, he is preaching in some of the top, uh, the biggest churches in America right now. God is using him. He is an anointed prophetic preacher. He's going to, uh, he told me today on the phone, he said, man, God told me he's going to release miracles tomorrow, so I'm really believing that. Uh, in the second service, I'm sitting here listening to Dr. Lee preach. And um, Mama Nixon says she, she saw it, she felt it, but I felt something break in the spirit. I, I saw something open. We were sharing it at lunchtime. We all four of us, we saw that. We felt it. Mama Nixon felt it. Um, and, and tonight we were under an open heaven. Hallelujah. And I praise God for that. We love you. God bless you. See you tomorrow night at 7.